which I think is important to advocate for yourself or others when there is something going on and they tell you what's on in your head that's not correct, get a second opinion, figure it out because chances are you know your body way more than the doctor does. Hey guys, it's Brenna Huckabee and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to finally do this and finally launch it. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I wasn't really sure how and the answers were finally gifted to me from the answer gods and I'm so pumped and excited to finally do this. I am going to share my story, my journey, my life, the fun, the ins, the outs, the in-betweens, the not so funs. I want to share and get raw and get real with everything that I've got going on. Um, I cannot wait. This is going to be so exciting. Today's video is how I was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, oof. Okay, today's video is how I was diagnosed with cancer. Yes, the C word, the scary word, the word nobody wants to hear. I heard it at 14 and it completely changed my life and my world and I wanna share with you how that even happened. So, I don't know how many people know this, but I grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I know you can't tell because I don't got that Southern accent, but it's true. I lived there my whole life up until I was 17 years old. So growing up in Baton Rouge, I had such an amazing childhood in the sense that I played outside all the time. Like every tree did not go unclimbed. I fell out of a lot of trees too. Like don't know how I didn't lose my leg from that. Um, but yeah, I had just a Louisiana childhood stomping around in the mud, going fishing, playing around with my neighborhood friends. We'd play this game called Spotlight and it was the bomb diggity. You would go outside at night one person had the light it was always my brother jeremy sorry jeremy love you and he was it and he had to like shine a light on you and if he like caught you then you had to go to jail and then anybody could free you from jail but they couldn't get caught so like really that game went on like all night and that one person that was it was literally it like all night again sorry jeremy love you <laughs> um but yeah, my childhood was so much fun. I, at age eight, I started gymnastics and I immediately fell in love. Um, how I got into gymnastics was I kept like teaching myself how to do things. And um, I would like kick my brothers in the head and I almost put a hole in the TV and my mom was like, girl, we can't do this anymore. We need to put you into some structure. So I started gymnastics actually before that. I did martial arts with my family because, you know, I'm the youngest, okay? I have two older brothers, mom and dad, they all did martial arts. And so naturally when you're the youngest, you kind of just like funnel into what everyone else is doing, whether you want to or not, because it's easy. And so I did martial arts for about like a year. And during this time, I hated it. I'm not going to lie. I was not into it. I didn't understand the routines. I, everything, like you would have to kick and flex your foot. And for some reason, like I wanted to point my foot. So I just didn't really like get it. Um, but I will say I did get a white belt with a green stripe. So watch out world because I've got a white belt with a green stripe. So don't come at me because I will kick your booty. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, I started gymnastics at age eight, immediately fell in love. I, kind of, I picked it up really fast, started competing within that year, went from level two to four to six to seven, eight. Um, and it became my like getaway from any struggles that I was having. It was my motivation to do well in school. I wanted a college scholarship. My parents, my, I, I don't come from a lot of money. And so college was kind of one of those things that my parents put on us. So if we wanted to go to college, we were going to need to find a way to fund it. And so I, knowing that I had this gymnastics ability, thought, you know, if I could just get a college scholarship for gymnastics, I could go to college, get a degree and live that kind of life, go that route. Everything was going great. Back it up, eighth grade, I was competing level eight. I had just um, competed in a regional event, which you had to qualify for. And at this event, it was really weird because like I would kill it in practice. And then by the time it was time to compete, I just blew it. And everybody thought like mentally, I don't have it. Like there's something going on. Um, you know, maybe high level competing isn't my thing. Um, so we just kind of wrote it off and was like, you know what, you need to train less, get your mind right, like figure out what's going on. So this was in 
spring summer of eighth grade and the, during this time which I think is also important to add I was having this knee pain and I went to the doctor for it a few months before this competition and I didn't see anything on the x-ray so they were basically kind of another thing that was in my head was this knee pain which you know and it, and it was funny because this knee pain always happened on vault and I hated vault I was kind of scared of it to be honest but I mean I pushed through but like I did not like vaulting and it was funny because my knee always hurt on vault and so they were like this is just another one of those things where you're mentally not ready and so um we wrote it off I took ibuprofen <laughs> and I vaulted and then yes yeah, so then spring spring summer of eighth grade I had this competition and then I would choke as they would call it um before events looking back at the pictures my back leg never was straight and I would get yelled at all the time, straighten your back leg, straighten your back leg. My back leg was also my right leg, which is also where I had knee pain. So fast forward to the fall, I'm getting ready for my level nine season. I've got most of the skills down, the routines are coming together. I've got October one as my start date for really like dialing in routines and the knee pain comes back but like this time it was way worse than ever before i went on a three mile run with my older brother and we were running on concrete and so i just kind of took it like i overdid it but when i came back home and i told my mom as i'm in tears which doesn't happen very often that my knee hurt she was like i'm done i've had it it's friday we're calling the doctor you're i'm tired of listening to you complain about your knee but then you know two minutes later you're fine She's like, there's got to be something going on. She, my mom was like, I don't take the fact that this is mental anymore. Like, this is not mental. There's something going on. So she calls the doctor. That next Monday is going to be my appointment. And I, okay, this side story, creepy. Okay, first of all, I did not know what cancer was. I know, big shock. I knew people that had cancer, but like, I didn't know what it was. I was, I just thought people with bald head got cancer and I know that's really sad and ignorant but that's just the world I was living in at the time so I was joking with one of my friends on Saturday morning practice and I was like what if it's cancer and then we were all like ah, ha, 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 playing around guys I am not even kidding then that Monday the big day that I go to my doctor Monday afternoon after school I'm sitting in the office I have an x-ray done because Side, another side note, because this is just my life and things pop into my head as, as I'm talking about them. When, when we went to this doctor's appointment, the main thing was to get physical therapy because the year before, whenever I went in and they told me it was all in my head, they told me to go to physical therapy to just kind of strengthen things. Cause like maybe, just maybe that was my problem. And so, I mean, when you're told that everything's in your head, but go to physical therapy anyway, if you don't have the money to go to physical therapy, you're not gonna go to physical therapy because like it's all in my head. So I never went to physical therapy. So at this point, my mom was like, well, maybe that's what you need. Maybe you just need physical therapy to strengthen it. So we were going to this doctor's appointment really just to get physical therapy. When we got in there, he was like, sorry, I have to take an x-ray. It's protocol before I can offer you PT, before I can write a prescription. You know, we just have to do it. So my mom and I were like, okay, whatever, just take the x-ray. So x-rays done, sitting in the doctor's office. X-rays on the screen, my mom's a nursing student at the time. It's just my mom, myself, my doctor. The room is completely silent. And that's unusual because my mom's usually asking a bunch of questions and they're having a chit chat, but it is quiet. They're intently looking at the screen and I'm like, I feel like I'm in a cartoon because I'm like looking at my doctor, looking at my mom, looking at the screen. No idea what's going on, but like, could read the room. There was something going on. So I'm like doing like one of these and trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Then they have the audacity to quietly walk out of the room to go talk about what they're seeing. And I'm just sitting there in like this weird panic of like, dear goodness, I just like blew my knee out. Like nobody's telling me what's going on. I'm going to need surgery. My season's over. Everything under the sun, except for cancer, is running through my mind. They come back in and they tell me nothing except that I have to get an MRI right now and <clears throat> so I'm like dude whatever like whatever I got to do now I'm definitely thinking I injured myself like I broke myself being stupid 
<sighs> so I go into the MRI, close my eyes, take a nap, because for whatever reason, like MRIs and the chaos around the noise <laughs> soothes me. Um, when I wake up, we go home. I'm sitting there and my mom comes in and she tells myself and my brothers what the doctor had seen. And it turns out on that x-ray, there was a tumor. I didn't know what a tumor was. Um, my brother, you know, I have one brother who's very dark sense of humor and a really interesting way to show love was like, Brenna, I hope you don't die. <laughs> and I was like, I don't even know what a tumor is. Like, I don't even know what's going on. Why am I dying? Oh, it was a mess. And then my other brother who, um, has an interest in veterinary medicine, knew what a tumor was, knew what was going on. So they're like staring at my x-ray screen because my mom like got the disc to take home and like going over like what it was. And fun fact, the year before, when you compare the two x-rays, you could actually see a very small tumor on that first x-ray. So it was not in my head, um, which I think is important to advocate for yourself or others when there is something going on and they tell you what's on in your head that's not correct, get a second opinion, figure it out because chances are you know your body way more than the doctor does and if you're dealing with pain, go get it figured out. It's not normal, you should not be hurting. <laughs> it's not in your head. So, rant over. Two days later, so I go to school the next day, I don't know why because my parents were like, we don't really know what to do. Let's just try and proceed as, as normal. Go to school the next day. Had no idea that was gonna be on my last day of high school for a very long time. So then two days later, we're in the car. We're headed to MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Um, this whole drive, like I said, I have no idea what's going on. I don't even know what cancer is. Um, I keep asking, I remember, I just kept asking like, mom, <clears throat> What's MD Anderson? What's a cancer center? Where am I going? Like, what is this? It's a five hour drive from my home. So that was a lot of the same questions over and over again. Meanwhile, my mom and I are in the back seat and she's making me take my legs and holding them out. And she's comparing my knee sizes. And during this time, we've noticed that this knee, my right one, is red hot. It's a little more swollen. And um, well, I guess that's it. It was just swollen and red hot but that's not normal and that's a sign of cancer. We didn't know that, you wouldn't know that. And honestly, we would never have noticed that had we have not been told that. So my mom's like kind of panicking, but she's keeping it together for me. We get to MD Anderson. I meet my oncologist or my future oncologist. I meet my orthopedic surgeon. They're telling me that it's probably benign because my tumor was circular. And normally if it's a cancerous tumor, it's like all. Oh. So, they're telling me it's benign, but we're gonna but, um, biopsy it anyway. And a biopsy, they take this really long needle with a syringe and they stab it into your leg and they pull out your cells and they test it. I was asleep, so I didn't feel it, but it's pretty much what they do. So the biopsy report comes back about two weeks later and within the, those two weeks, we've already decided if anything happens, I'm gonna be treated at MD Anderson because we have the best, they have the best surgical team and the best protocol for my cancer at the time. So we already know if it's cancer, we're gonna do this. If it's not, we're just gonna have surgery and dance because I don't have to get chemotherapy. It was cancer. Was sitting in the room, they were telling me like, your tumor is malignant and this means you have to do chemotherapy. And for my type of cancer, surgery is the only option. So I knew that at this point, I still didn't fully know what cancer was, but I knew that it was going to be the end of my season, the end of my hair. I didn't know it was gonna be the end of my leg at the time, but I knew that this was going to suck. <laughs> it's crazy talking about this because I feel like I've touched on it and I touched on pieces of my story but getting down into the nitty gritty of like how I was diagnosed with cancer, that one piece, like it's like pulling on my heartstrings a little bit. Um, reliving those moments, like, wow, it was, it was really scary. I, like I said, you know, when you don't know what's going on and you're hearing these words that you've, you know, the only people that you know that have, have had cancer died 
And anytime anyone's like, oh yeah, my aunt had cancer and she's dead now. You're like, that's all you know. I don't, I didn't know anything else other than like people got it and they died. And so whenever I was told that like, you have cancer, it's time. Like <laughs> you're the chosen one. All I could think about was the possibility of death, but it was interesting because I still didn't see myself dying. I just knew the possibility was there, but part of me was like, not you kid, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna live. <laughs> I don't know why, it was just in there. I'm excited to share, I guess, the next step because like what happens next? You get told that you have cancer and like you just start chemo and an amputation? No, there are a lot of steps that were involved, a lot of time that was in it involved, um, a lot of learning, a lot of crying, a lot of laughing, and a lot of throwing up. <laughs> so, next video. Um, thank you guys for watching. I apologize for the hand motions. I don't know what they come from. I How do I want to put this? Oh. Okay. <laughs>